So in this video, I want to cover the log watch. Uh, where go? Uh, I want to cover installing log watch on FreeBSD 10.2. Logwatch is nice because it takes the relevant information out of your logs and it can feed it to you in an email and a couple of other different ways. And it's just a quick way to get an email every day from your server or however often you want to saying, hey, everything's okay. And by the way, here's some stuff that I noticed that you may want to take a look at. So Logwatch is not part of the binary packages that come with FreeBSD. So there is no pkg space install log watch but it does come as part of the ports package manager and basically ports is a collection of make files patches and description files stored in user ports and basically what it does is you can go into ports and there are tons of port packages I actually ran the update and as you can see I can scroll back and I'm still basically in the X and the W so you can imagine how long this list was, and I didn't want to have the whole video running uh, with the ports. In your install, in the default install for FreeBSD, ports is installed unless you unchecked it when you were doing the install, it would have come onto the system. So you basically need to start from here, which is port snap fetch. And basically what that does is it actually goes out and gets the latest image and saves it in this directory for you and then you use port snap extract which then actually takes the downloaded file and creates the directory structure with the header files that you need to be able to build any of the ports applications that are out there so I've already done port snap dot fetch I've already done port snap dot extract again these take a long time so I didn't want to bore the bore you with the with the video and on that part, but in this case, in this case, we want to install LogWatch, which I happen to believe is in the CD user ports. I think net LogWatch or sysutils log. In a quick ls in this directory will show you that we have a make file, uh, a distro info, a files directory, a package description, and a package plist. You don't really need to bother with the details of this other than to simply say make install clean. And of course it's going to ask, because I didn't do sudo, it's going to ask for a password, but I'm going to give it sudo because I already have done that. And as you can see, it goes through and it starts downloading. And based on any options that the uh, that the configurator needs, it'll pop up and ask you for those questions using a pretty decent graphical user interface. I always like the text-based ones myself. And now it's attempting, as you can see, attempting to fetch from one of the mirrors. And of course, if it fails to do so, it will probably use a different mirror to go and do it. But it looks like it's doing it. There we go. A little slower than I expected. <clears throat> and here we go. Now it needs Perl 5. And again, it gives you, it comes up, it says, okay, there's a Perl 5 dependency. We need to uh, download and install it. Here are the options. I just click OK and go with the default options. As you get more advanced, obviously, you can go through there and maybe there's some things that you need. And as you can see, it begins the compilation process. It runs through the configuration file, feeding it the options that you had selected on the screen and actually compiles and since we gave it the install command it also installs the product onto the server and once we have this uh, fully configured all we need to do 
is set it up. In this case, the way LogWatch works is you place it in the cron file of your of your uh, folder. And again, here on a server that we have already installed, um, I'll go ahead and let's do sudo again. etc logwatch. Sorry, user local etc log watch uh, defaults logwatch.com. Now, for some of you who come from the Linux world, this might be a little bit awkward. The for the ports packages and in from old Unix, from the old days of Unix, user local was where the application information would always be stored. So you do have a user local etc also. So if you don't find a file in etc itself, always check user local etc and you may find what you're looking for there. So here, um, I've edited the default I've edited the default format for the default log uh, logwatch.com file. Um, the things that I did edit was the output. Uh, I like that in mail versus STD out, so it's going to mail it to me. Mail to, that's my corporate email address. Mail from, in this case, we're going to call it logwatch at diablito.inksystems.com. And how far back do you want it to go? So it's going to go all the way back to yesterday, and we're going to be running it daily. Um, we have a low level of details, and again, you can study the logwatch documentation to uh, get all the get all the details on what the different detail levels are. And pretty much, the only other thing we need to worry about is the send the mailer we're using. It uses send mail minus t, and that's it. So. Really, uh, the mailer default settings are fine. Everything is pretty much default setting is as being fine. The only thing we really changed is we changed the output to mail, um, where we want this mail to, and where we want the mail coming from. So once you do that, um, I simply edited the uh, cron tab file and I placed within that cron tab file this daily log watch cron job. You can also install this into your periodic daily, weekly, monthly folders. Um, just do a search, uh, do a man for periodic and it will tell you all the details of what that application does. I just happened to put it in my cron tab because I like to keep, you know, it's it's something that I've added in there, and I know where it is, and I'll remember that. So that's what works for me. Now, once you've done that, you will, at some point within the next day or two, if your server is able to mail out, and we'll talk about that as well, you will get a mail such as this. In this mail will look something like this. So here from Charlie Root, details of what's going on. So these are some of the daily cron jobs that are running, disk status, how much space I have, what my interface statuses are, local system time. And then you'll notice down here that it actually sends out the security email and is a separate email, which I like because now I can see hey you know who's had some bad logins mostly me because I keep mistyping my password and also it checks the vulnerability and this was what I like it actually lists the vulnerability uh, that these packages have vulnerabilities and I can go through and I can look for updates and patches to patch it in the ports system in the port system I can actually go and patch those files update it uh, until the fix is actually applied and then once the fix is applied I can download a fresh copy of the ports, recompile and make sure that my system is up to date. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much LogWatch in a bundle and so 
all you do is you uh, edit this file change the settings here and then you also go in here and you add this one line to run the log watch in cron tab .e. now I will say this if you go to my etc mail and you look at my diablito.mc let me use Vim because I like it because it does the nice coloring stuff. And I only need it to be read only. Um, in my case, in order for mail to go out properly, I had to define the smart host um, to our SMTP gateway because we don't allow servers to just send mail out. They all have to go through our filtering gateway which checks for uh, viruses and spam and all that kind of stuff we want to be a good uh, netizen here so that's the only thing I had to do in send mail was actually define my smart relay host and then basically recreate the send mail macro and if you don't know how to do that maybe I'll cover it in another video um, but that's a pretty standard send mail uh, configuration not much having to do with FreeBSD or anything like that anyway <laughs> back to our log watch as you can see it's all there um, if I now do vim let me do sudo vim etc oh, user local etc log watch uh, default log watch conf you'll see the differences here So here, uh, the standard output was std out. I want to say mail. Mail to root. Um, again, I'm just going to put my corporate email mail from at, and this is systems.com, just to be precise. And none of the other settings here uh, I'm going to change or modify. Okay. And uh, the only thing the only thing left to do really is to um, again edit that cron tab uh, file. And again, you could put it in these periodic daily. Uh, you could put it in the periodic daily uh, folder and uh, just do a man periodic and you'll get the whole details on how that works just so that I an old school kinda guy and always have done this I'm gonna put it here in this file so actually and I can just take this from just copy that from here easy enough there you go and probably, I probably should have done this, but just to be on the safe side, just to be proper, really. Uh, make sure these aren't spaces and they're actual tabs. There we go. Just like these guys are tabs. Okay, and that's it. We have that in there. And if you actually take this guy and you sudo, it's going to run the log watch PL and really nothing's going to happen. So tomorrow when we come in, we're going to have a email from Correo to our inbox telling us what the status of the machine is. All right. Thanks.